You know, you're not independent because you move out of your parents' basement. You have the capability to do some things, but you have the agency to make decisions. And for your disabled child to become independent and able to make decisions and choices for themselves, just really, I think, increases your commitment to make certain they can do so safely. And again, that's where Safe and Home comes in. You've heard you know, experts talk about the dignity of risk. You know, uh, why can't Ben walk two blocks up to the grocery store and get a quart of milk? Independence says, let him, let him try. And so, independence requires as much of the person as it requires of those who support that person. It requires a release on the part of me as a parent, my, my son becoming independent, and allow him to form his own visions for himself. This isn't the end of the transition. You know, the next stage of the transition is when we're not here to talk with Safe Home, and we're not here to ask that he load the medicine uh, dispenser. And you're hoping that we use this period of time so that he builds the skills that he needs to go forward. I'm just so happy that I can live on my own. I have my own job and I'm making my own money. I feel safe at home because I have safe in home. She would not be able to be here in her apartment without the safe and home. Safe and home has helped me drastically by limiting the calls that I get because they're able to help her off the cliff, kind of help de-stress de her, just knowing that she has, she calls it a friend on the other end of the tablet. I'm trying to work full time and she's calling me nonstop, but Safe and Home has reduced those calls by being able to be that extra mom fill in when mom isn't able to get to the phone. They've helped out in the middle of the night. They've helped out in the afternoon when she's struggling. It alleviates a lot of stress. So it's a drastic, drastic lifesaver in Emily's life and mine. She's living an independent life one that I never ever would have thought she could have had and it's a far better quality of life than what she would have had if she was living at home with me. Uh, my health continued to deteriorate. And because of his stubbornness and I'm going to do it my way, which got stronger as he got older, he didn't like me telling him, you've got to do this or do that. And I had reached a place I really could not look after him properly. And we discussed, we had already talked about it. He was very happy. He wanted to live independently. And he kept saying, I'm going to move into that apartment in one year and I want the top floor. Well, the next thing that happened, he was offered an apartment at one year, and he got the top floor. And he was so excited about moving in. He got to pick out furniture. He got to pick out dishes. So he, he did it, and he likes it, and I'm happy for him. It gives me a sense of peace because it's like a mama, you know, that's taking care of her child. There, in every area of his life, he is monitored. Uh, and it's such a comfort to me and everybody else. He had a GPS, I guess. If he got lost or something happened, he could use that. And I didn't know that, and I'm really happy. It's a privacy thing. It's not something that you're noticed. It's not like Big Brother. Uh, it's just something that is there to take care of him when there's no one else that can be there. So, you know, everyone talks about falling off the disability cliff at 22. For us, it was actually when Emma's life began. I mean, it's, it's incredible, right? I mean, it's given us the confidence and her the confidence that she can be safe, that she has a way to communicate to us and with us, to be able to um, communicate what she needs with our supports at Safe and Home and just her being in control of her life. I mean, we could not do this 
without this technology. I mean, it, it's absolutely no way, but what the world offers her now that we have these devices is, I mean, there's nothing gonna stop her or, you know, her friends in the disability world. I mean, Emma has a right to do what she wants to do when she wants to do it, and not only is it a right, it's what she wants for her life. So the fact that she has moved out of the family home and is living this independent life with friends, with a community that loves her and accepts her, and she has changed the way she interfaces with the world, partly I think because she has the confidence of knowing that she is safe, she is protected, and she has this community. So everything has changed. I mean, moving out of the family home is it's enormous, right? I mean, there's, there's just no other way to put it. She is relaxed, she is happy, she's proud of herself. I mean, we're proud of her. I mean, it's, it's kind of an amazing accomplishment. I mean, she is living a self-determined life. This is what she wants and she's doing it and we could not be prouder.